I warned you not to listen to that, Gets My Goat. Now look at you. I'll be podcasting for my own hand. If you had the chance to change your podcast, would you? Yeah, she didn't actually say that in the movie. No, yeah, I figured that was just a line for the commercial only. That's funny. Hey, this is Rich Outfield. And this is Big Anklevich. And this is That Gets My Goat. Brave edition. And this is a very brave episode. So, I, I suppose <laughs> last episode was all about your disaster. And that happened to be the same week that Brave came out. That's right, yeah. We went and saw it Saturday morning after the disaster. It was the morning before I'd even gone back to my house yet. We got together at a theater and watched Brave. It was a way to pass the time, really, because like I was saying in that episode, I had nothing to do. I wasn't at my own house. I couldn't just do the things that I would do at my house. I was sitting at my sister's house, and it, it tends to get tedious sometimes when you got nothing to do, and so I was happy to get off and go and see Brave. And I, I thought that you wouldn't want to anymore because, you know, it's not important compared to your kid's mangled face and your mangled <laughs> car and the fate of your house unknown. But it's just like, you know, when times are worst during the Depression, or during the war, whatever it would be, that's when people go to the movies the most. Yeah. It's people need a break. They need somebody to take their mind off their problems it's yeah. nice to forget about that stuff. Even my son with the mangled face came with us yeah. to see the movie that day. So he was happy to go. He was excited. Gosh, I don't know how much time we want to set aside for this. Do you want to run it or do you want me to? Or? I won't run it, but I just have one thing to start with. Sure. And we've talked about this a little already. But the title Brave for this movie, I will say I think that was the worst thing about the movie. The title Brave was absolutely a worthless title. There was nothing in the movie that gave you a reason to call it Brave. There was no pivotal thing about it where, oh, this... Facing your fears. Yes, this girl has to be brave. Or because she was brave, she saved the day. Or she was an Indian brave, and so it really worked out. It had nothing to do with anything. I mean, I guess you could say, yeah, she was kind of brave, but she was many other things much more. It made Tangled look like a great title. And Tangled was stupid because, you know, you look at that title and you're just like, her hair didn't tangle once. Tangled it is her a hair pun, was, though. Her hair was remarkably untangly. It never mm -hmm. once. She dragged it through the woods and not even a stick stuck in it. I was going to get gas and I passed the marquee of a theater and through the corner of my eye i was just like drive is still playing at this theater and you know i did a double take and it was brave but it looked like drive to me and it just, but the title yeah you the title means nothing and we've we've talked about that somebody somewhere tested it and they tested the bear and the bow and they felt like Brave got a stronger reaction. And, I, oh, I went to the mattresses with my cousin over this because he insisted that both Tangled and Brave were infinitely better titles than Rapunzel and the Bear and the Bow. I, I can't see his point of view because, yeah. like I said, Brave doesn't mean anything. Mean anything. And, and you know what? They That's, might have said the word Brave in the movie at some point. I don't point. think so. I don't think they even they, said it but once. we talked about it. They never said Tangled in right. Rapunzel. But he said, you know, he would not have seen that movie if it had been called Rapunzel. And I was like, oh, well, that sucks. So, but you did go see it when it was called Tangled. And he goes, no. <laughs> and I was just like, dude. He didn't go see it anyway. You know? <laughs> so how is it better? Yeah, you know, it's funny. The Bear and the Bow was the title. When it comes down to it, that's not a great title. There was a bear. There was a bow. I mean, the bow wasn't a, also wasn't a pivotal thing. It seemed like it should be because in all the ads and everything, it was all about Merida oh, shooting arrows and shooting archery and splitting that arrow down the middle just like Robin Hood did in the old uh, Disney cartoon. You know, it seemed like this archery thing was totally a pivotal plot point, story thing, character. Well, we figured she would save the day using her archery. Right, in some way, that, but it wasn't. It was other things that were going on. Archery was just kind of a characteristic about her, like she had red hair. And so the bow wasn't as, I mean, the bear was a pivotal part. 
but there's already a movie called The Bear. That's true. And and also about a year ago when we were talking about this, you said, well, there's Brother Bear true. out there. And they don't yeah, want they to confuse called, people. They should have called this movie Mother Bear. <laughs> oh, that's, that's clever. There were story, there were aspects of this that were the same or similar to Brother Bear, right? There were, yeah. And so I guess I can see them shying away from it. But they totally shied away from a significant part of this movie, which is the the, the, the person, the mother. Yeah, right? the entire plot of the movie, basically. You have no idea about this. I remember, you know, we'd seen various trailers for this show. They all are like, you know, Meredith's crazy. She wants to be her own person. No, She's going to be short. I don't and... want to get married. I want to have <laughs> my, my hair blown in the wind. And my Firing arrows into the sunset. Yeah, it was all about that. The majority of the stuff that you see from that trailer is from like the first 20 minutes. It's pre-inciting incident material. And generally, when you promote a movie, you give the people an idea of, you know, this is what this story is about. This happens to this person. What will they do? But you didn't get any of that from this, uh, from the whole lead into this movie. From what I understand, the journalists that saw preview screenings for their reviews were told not to discuss that her mother turns into a bear. That's a spoiler. That's a that's something we don't want you to share with your readers and so they had to talk about the movie without going into that which is strange to me it's it's i've been to press screenings before where they say please don't talk about and then they say something but it's usually like something that happens at the end or you know the character dies or something like right. that but for them just to say what the movie is about is not something we want you to discuss because it it seemed like a girl was being forced into a marriage that she did or into a life that she didn't want. And so she runs away. And that's what the movie was going to be about. Yeah, it seemed kind of like that. But they did show a tiny bit with bears. You did see a bear. It. The only so, bear you saw was the scary bear. I mean, I guess that's probably why they removed bear from the title altogether. Is because, I mean, it must go along with that whole, we don't want you to discuss the bear. Maybe they were afraid of being called Mother Bear. Because Brother Bear was not a big success. It was the movie that closed down Disney 2D animation, really. So maybe it had something to do with that. I don't know. It seemed like they were counting on the Pixar name getting people in and the fact that it's about a girl getting people in. And, you know, it did fine at the box office. People were worried that this was going to be a failure. And, and people, the ones that wanted to, still said that this is a failure. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see much of a chance of it being a failure. I judge that kind of stuff from my kids, though. I, my kids were talking about it. And, you know, they'd see the stuff on the Disney Channel advertising. And they're like, Daddy, I want to go and see Brave so bad. And I'm like, you sure you don't want to see Madagascar 3? And they're like, <laughs> So, yeah, uh, this is a audio podcast. So you didn't see the hand motion that I made in the air there. <laughs> see, I don't have the same point of view. I, I rarely see what the kid ad campaigns are, but I felt like the ad campaign was fine. I, I'm sorry. I'm one of those people. They're preaching to the converted. Yeah. I'm going to see it right. no matter what. And I think that the same kids that went and saw Toy Story or Cars or Up or, you know, whatever it is, Wally would go see this regardless of whether they're girls or boys. But this was, they did make a big deal that this is the first female-centric Pixar film, the first one with a female lead. And, and I don't know, that it's crazy. Since we've been doing this podcast, we've seen that turn against Pixar, of the people that want it to fail. And the first one that I remember where people were just like, oh, creatively bankrupt those guys is Toy Story 3, and then the next year we got Cars 2, and then the next year we got Monsters, Inc., Zero, and, all that. <laughs> and, and that's, that got bumped to next year, and this year we got Brave instead. Every one people are saying, well, that's, that's it. This one looks bad. This one's not going to work. This one sucks or whatever. People wanted it to suck, right? The reviews or the, the previews or the, the, the buzz before this came out was, okay, here's the one, Cars 2, 
was the first critically disdained Pixar film. And it was the first to underperform. It was the first to make less than $200 million. Right. And this one's going to be just as bad or this one's going to be, you know, whatever the deal is. And it's not got the critical reception that some of the others did, but it's no Cars 2. Right. It's it's not 30% or whatever like Cars 2 was on Rotten Tomatoes, well, it but it is right? at 75. 75. So wow. it's not doing as well because most Pixar movies are above 90. Very few of them have, have not been. I think... Cars 1 is the only other Pixar movie that was out of the 90s. Oh. Okay. Was down in the 70s as well. So, And and when you review this, do you review it as its own movie? Or do you line it up against the other 12 Pixar movies and say, this is how it measures up next to Finding Nemo? And, that, and, and to give it a bad review, you have to be comparing it. To the greatest of the Pixar movies, you know, I, I've, everybody has a movie that appeals to them, and then a movie that somehow misses them. And for years and years, I always felt like Bugs Life wasn't at the same level as some of these others. Then Ratatouille came along and saved me from that. Now I can love Bugs Life, but uh, some people just jumped on Ratatouille as, "Oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful." You know what I mean? Yeah, there was a l- every a lot of people loved anime. it. That it got Every, a lot of the best animated it. film Oscar that year. Just it really surprised me because I didn't yeah, respond to Ratatouille. Something about the cooking or whatever. I don't know what it was, but it just didn't do it for me. And then this one, I had heard, ooh, another miss from Pixar. Or, or one guy, one reviewer had said that pretty good just doesn't cut it for Pixar. Or what. And so I, I don't know if my expectations were lowered because of that, but... It's not like I went to it with my dukes up like I do with some movies, you know, like Battleship or whatever it is. But, dude, the movie was so good. I, it somehow spoke to me in a way that it didn't speak to 25% of critics. Right. I don't know. It was a lot of fun. It was very different from other Pixar films, I think. I guess just the focus of it, you know. I mean, it's the first one that's like a fairy tale or something. It seems like it had more in common, as far as that goes, with some of those DreamWorks movies, because they've done those a lot. Fairy tale type films. And I guess more in common with Disney films. Maybe we'll start seeing Merida right there beside Sleeping Beauty and Snow White and stuff on the... We've got a cup over there on the counter that has a bunch of princesses on it. And Rapunzel is on that cup. Wow. And oh, so is... So is uh, Deja Thoris, yes. <laughs> Princess and the Frog, I can't remember what her name was. Tiana. Tiana, okay, yeah. So is Tiana also on that cup? Although, since she's Pixar, maybe that'll somehow be separate, or maybe it won't. I, you get Buzz Lightyear at Disneyland and stuff, so maybe it won't be separate. Maybe we'll start seeing her. Maybe they don't want to confuse people with two redhead princesses, because they've already got Ariel on everything. But maybe because she has curly, crazy hair, it's different enough. I don't know. She does have curly, crazy hair. And that's something that I want to talk about in our next episode. But the fact that it was girl-centric, is that fair to say? I hate that I have to walk on eggshells on this stuff. You know what this show is. The fact that it was about a girl, Mm -hmm. was that in any way alienating to you? And was it in any way alienating to your son? It wasn't in any way any <laughs> yeah see it wasn't in any way alienating to me I didn't have any problem with that I am able to put myself in that place I don't know I didn't ask my son if, if he was like yeah, this is just about a girl so I didn't care but I don't think it was but would he not have said I don't want to go if right if he if he was alienated enough he would have said nah I'm not interested I don't want to see it he was at his cousin's house playing with his cousins and I called him down and said yeah you want to come to this we're gonna go and he's like yeah so you know he didn't even think twice about it whereas my youngest daughter she she was playing with her cousins and she wanted to stay with her cousin she stayed and played with her cousins and didn't come with us to the movie so I would assume he would have done the same he had reason to but he didn't so he was interested enough in seeing that movie that he didn't care I would hope, I mean, I don't, see, I don't understand that whole thing 
you would think that i mean it's still a person it's basically the same as finding nemo but with people instead of with fish and with a mom and a daughter instead of with a father and a son it was a similar dynamic i was able to put myself in the place of the fish in finding nemo and i'm able to put myself in the place of the the mother and daughter and brave without and i think everyone can do that but the conventional wisdom is and i know we've said this a billion times but the boys won't go see movies about girls boys won't read books about girls boys hate girls boys bad <laughs> and and i know we've argued and we've had whole episodes about that but i don't know cuz again people are people right and i think you, everybody there are things that are universal and everybody pretty much everybody has a mother and everybody has been in conflict with their parents and stuff i just i don't know if it had been a son and a father if well we wouldn't even be having this conversation because right. it's just a given that we would be talking about something else but would the movie have made more money i i don't know what did brother bear make its opening weekend <laughs> i mean i don't care but at the same time it's I'm just, sure it made squad it didn't make as much as brave made its opening weekend and its whole run i doubt all right well there there are people that are afraid and i don't know i'm not willing to say that they mangled <laughs> I'm not willing to say that they mangled Rapunzel, but you know, they rejiggered that thing so that it would appeal to boys and be much more male centric. And we had that conversation. If that version of Rapunzel had come out, you know, there's no way of knowing if it would have done better or, or worse. But a good movie is a good movie. And I think. A good movie with a female lead speaks to people in the same way that a good movie with a male lead speaks to people. I, I, I. There are movies that are much more for one or the other. Like yesterday, my brother-in-law was watching Rambo, the, the fourth one. And okay. my sister went, oh, and went downstairs. And, oh, no, I'm sorry. That was your wife. My sister went downstairs. She didn't make that noise. But, you know, I can understand. This is not a movie for her. In the same way that, you know, if we'd seen the little Lifetime Network logo in the corner, I would know what whatever she was watching was not for me. But then there are other stories that are much more universal. Oh, I was wrong. Brother Bear's Lifetime Gross was $85 million. It's got the mooses on the poster. The yeah. moose are loose. <laughs> Brother Bear. You hated Brother Bear, right? I, I hated it because of what it represented. Not because of the movie itself. It was so-so. It wasn't really great. It wasn't terrible. I just hated it because I knew it wasn't going to be great. I could tell beforehand it wasn't going to be great. I could tell just by the stupid thing that the guy said. There was the article that I read in the paper where they were talking about people just want to see 3D animation. They don't want to see 2D animation anymore. 2D's dumb. And people just like 3D. And they said, yeah, we, we may be closing down our 2D animation studio soon. We've got a, a few more movies uh, down the pipe that uh, we're going to judge on their performance, whether people still want to see 2D movies. I mean, we've got Brother Bear coming up. And I was like, oh, no, Brother, you're basing the future of 2D movies on Brother Bear? Is Yeah, you know, that's, that's one of those things that's always worked well for us in Disney animation. Talking animals are always a big thing for us. You know, if it doesn't do well, then maybe it just means that people don't want to see 2D animation anymore. Well, if they had bumped Rapunzel up on the rotation in front of Brother Bear and Home on the Range, maybe things would have been very different. And who knows how right. different Rapunzel would have been from Tangled. Yeah. There's things that we can never know. There's that how alternative would, world. How different would Kingdom of the Sun have been from Emperor's New Groove? We'll never know. We just need to slide over to that dimension. It's in the darkest <laughs> darkest timeline. I love the finale when he's going to cut off Jeff's arm. <laughs> he's having trouble plugging his bone saw in. Let me remove Brother Bear from your sight so you can stop squinting in that angry... Uh... I don't hate Brother Bear. I never saw it again. But I, sometimes the response of the people around you can influence that. And your right. hatred for it has... I don't know that it soured me, but I never went back and I never bought it or any of that stuff. Sadly, I did. I mean, I didn't, but my wife did. Huh. 
we bought it for our, when we moved out here from California. She's like, well, we need to have something. I, I wanted to get some new DVDs for the kids to watch on, on the drive. So she bought Brother Bear. And I was like, oh, there was nothing we could have paid money for better than that? Paid full price for this? It wasn't even on sale? There are things that people respond to. That's what we were saying a half hour ago. And I responded <laughs> to the story of Merida and her mother and the, the stuff with the, the bickering warlords or whatever. Uh-huh, you the various clans, the clans fighting with each other. Was, was fun. And, and I, I don't know. I just I was entertained. And more importantly, I was moved by the story. And so it's a success for me. I don't know where I would rank it with the others. I certainly liked it more than Cars 2 and yes. Ratatouille. Um, yes. But had I heard that it was awesome instead of that it was another fail, I might have felt differently. I, I don't know. I, I really wanted to like it. Me too. And that has a lot to do with whether I like movies or not, except for Avengers I really wanted to like, and I really expected Joss to pull it off, and I loved it. So going into a movie with lowered expectations is, of course, good, but if a movie is good enough, I think it can rock you out. Wow, wow. Oh, I thought Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter had 76. And I was like, wow, how is that possible? But it's 37. 37. Sorry, you're not supposed to look at this. Why? It distracts you. Well, yeah, but why do you get to look at it? I just wanted to look a, a couple of what some of the other rankings were for. Uh, I, I can't say why Ratatouille speaks to people in the way that it does. There is the moment when the Peter O'Toole critic character bites into the, the food and he suddenly is a child again, which was really, really cool. It was. Yeah, I really liked that moment but myself. most of the rest of the movie didn't reach me. And, you know, there's that. There are other movies that other people don't. Uh, you know, I, my cousin doesn't think... Finding Nemo is that great, but he's incapable of feeling love. So maybe that's part of <laughs> the problem on that. I bet you if he listened to that movie podcast and they told him that it was great, then he would. Ratatouille, 96. Yeah. I, I, what is it about that movie that critics love so much? I don't know. I don't... Finding Nemo, 98. But I remember, year was it last year? When Cars 2 came out, the local paper gave it an excellent review. And said, you know, that people are saying that this is Pixar's first misstep. But no, it was that environmentalist propaganda turd, <laughs> Wally. And I was just like, what? There was somebody out there that didn't love Wally? I love Wally. Rush Limbaugh didn't love Wally. I kill somebody that didn't like Wally. <laughs> wow. Monsters Inc. 95. Yeah, Monsters Inc. was the one that lost to Shrek. In yeah. the Pixar Academy Award category. Wally 96. <sighs> yeah. Taking the bullet train to Rape Town. So Wally was, it doesn't score as high as Finding Nemo. Sorry, man. Which do you prefer? Or, or was I this prefer a, Finding Nemo. Is this something we're saving for? A, oh, we could save it for a thing. I prefer Finding Nemo as well, but. Mm. Toy Story? 100%. Huh. Cool. Toy Story 2, 100%. Right. Toy Story 3, 99%. Remember, there was one person that gave it a negative review, wasn't there? And they were, and they were like, this guy isn't a real <laughs> critic. You've got to take that down. Do you remember? And there was like a petition to remove that one bad review for t Toy Story 3. Yeah, that guy's still there. Bugs Life, 92 Ooh, Incredibles at 97. That's, aside from the Toy Stories and Finding Nemo, that's the highest. And then we'll go to Cars, 74. Cars 2, 38. Riding in Cars with Boys, 49. <laughs> uh, where did Up, 98. So yeah, that even beats... Uh, Incredibles and Ties Finding Nemo. Knocked up 90. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed it would be that high. Knocked up's a, a, an okay movie. It's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it was yeah. all right. Anyhow, uh, I, I don't know why we're talking about this. <laughs> there, there, there are other things to talk about, like how did it do in the box office? But the box office doesn't mean as much as how it did in my heart, which <laughs> sounds super lame. But it's just... 
there were things that I hadn't seen before in Brave, and then there were things that I had seen, but not that there were a, a different twist on, and and I thought that that was cool. Um, my uncle had said that was that like a spinoff of How to Train Your Dragon, and I thought about that, and I, I guess well they both set in Scottish-ish places. Right. Although I think Brave was actually Scotland. Yeah, I think Brave was actually Scotland. Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon was just some... Viking Scottish. Scottish Viking Barakel place. But yeah, what was uh, your favorite thing about the film? If you had the chance to say what was your favorite, what would you say? It's a whole other episode. So I'm going to say my second favorite thing about the movie was that they all had Scottish accents. Mm -hmm. Uh, It wasn't like How to Train Your Dragon where only the adults had Scottish accents and somehow the children did not. Well, there's an illogic to that, to How to Train Your Dragon. And we give the main characters to American actors and then we can have all the funny foreigners do the the minor characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's like had Ratatouille this, was that way as well. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's why I don't like it. But had this movie gone ahead with Reese Witherspoon as Merida, or Jennifer, or whatever they would have called her had Reese Witherspoon <laughs> played her, there's no way that wouldn't have bothered me. There's mm-hmm. no way that it's like Emma Thompson and Billy Connolly are her parents, but she talks like Reese Witherspoon. I don't know. There was a certain respect for the audience and respect for the culture that they're trying to set it in by having the accent. And I appreciate that. And it's possible that there are other people that are, will be turned away from that. Flyover country. But there was the one Scottish dude, the son, whose brogue was so strong <laughs> that no one understood him. And, you know, that's that's fun. And there were Scottish sounding score and bagpipes and mm-hmm. kilts. And, 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 you know, I just... And all, lack thereof. And, and Stonehenge type... <laughs> ruins and things like that and just i don't know there's something really cool about just jumping into that culture and saying that that's what it is instead of a bastardization and you know what i like how to train your dragon a lot more than i thought i would Mm -hmm. but it is a like a fantasy world that's part america and part scotland and part wherever vikings come from scandinavia you can just say that Um, i think vikings are from puerto rico some you know things like that that I really liked. Do you have a th- favorite thing that you liked about the movie that is brief? Or should we leave it for the next episode? It's fairly brief. Okay. I was just going to say my favorite thing I think was just... I think I loved the competitiveness slash brawliness of the uh, the various clans. They were just It was just so fun to see the... Uh, the way that they would interact with each other and they were always competing, whether it was actual the games where they were supposed to be competing or who's going to row their boat ashore the fastest as they came in. That's when you're first introduced to them. You see them rowing in and then the other clan rows up and they're like, oh, you know, and then the other one rows up and then all of a sudden it becomes a race. Of course, that's kind of the undoing of the whole thing because they get competitive to the point where they just want to shoot arrows into each other. And that's what they, they're they trying to prevent. But yeah, I just loved it. It was just really fun. You know, you just get the idea that those guys probably do that all. Like, like they go home. They're done with this whole visit to their other clan. They go home and they just, when dinner's over, they do the dishes and then they go into the, the living room and they just, you know, push the furniture to the side and just box each other all night long for fun or something like that, you know? It just was entertaining. It, it was, uh, it cracked me up a lot. Uh, hand in hand with what I just said, I, I was so fresh that all of the, God, I hate saying this, but I'm going to, the pop songs that were in the movie were all Scottish. They were all Celtic type songs. It would have been so tempting for them to say, let's get Taylor Swift to do a song. Let's have a, a country song in here or whatever. Mm-hmm. And just, they didn't. You used to always criticize when artists would sell out. And to do that, to have Reese Witherspoon in the lead and to have all your Nashville favorites 
doing songs throughout this would have been such a sellout and yet it's such a more commercially secure way to go. Like aiming for the NASCAR crowd for the Cars movies and having these bands that have the big following in NASCAR towns have songs on the soundtrack or whatever that guarantees a certain percentage of the audience and they didn't do that on this on brave Mm -hmm. and and that makes me want to jump into what i liked the most so i'm going to stop right now and tell you in the next episode what i thought was the most remarkable all right so uh that's the end of this episode everybody just chill why do you keep saying that the next episode (laughs) we'll see you next time You know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother? Say be cool, bitch! Say be cool, bitch! Sorry.